just moving away a little bit. But Merv wasn't to have it all his own way. And that's gone away as well, even if not off the middle of the bat. The hook shot. Man down on the long leg boundary. Just running around to take it out of the gutter. It was Alderman, though, who was really testing the West Indian openers with the right line and length, but without the luck. Well, that's the first appeal for the innings. Haynes going across the line of the ball here. Yes, that may just have been sneaking down the leg side. Couldn't have been far away, though. As if it was just going down the leg side. A little bit of nip back there. a big drive and the outswinger just missing the outside edge to finish the over at no wicket for 18. Hughes' attempts to break through became brutal. And what a brute of a ball. That's the length. That's the doubt. Gordon Greenwich the chewing gum nervously going there on the jaws but he won't have liked this one. Look at that. Very high arm delivery. It beat the shoulder of the bat. Took him just below the elbow. Had no idea about that one. He had to commit himself to the shot. That so easily could have ballooned into the gully area for a third slip. Trying to get the head out of the way. But if Hughes was battering the Windies into submission, Alderman was going to shout them down. It looked to me as though it was just going down leg side. Not by much, but just enough. Alderman always gets in fairly close to the stumps, as close as he has, and I think the angle there, that may have pitched in line about leg stump, but the angle has continued on. That's well bold. New bowler McDermott wasn't having the success of his predecessors. Yeah, there's a good stroke. Benny just still holding that left arm very stiffly. Well, his elbow is getting worse and he's scoring more runs. That's a good shot. The combination of the hammering he'd received from Hughes and the effort of belting McDermott around the park had taken its toll on Greenwich. Meanwhile, Alderman was still trying the verbal approach on Haynes. But nothing was working for the Australians, as Steve Waugh discovered. out from war that's uh, very well run that ball only I suppose went a meter two meters at the absolute most in front of the crease and yet they were through very quickly and he looked gone for all money the ball popped there was a bit of a hesitation and the fields was in didn't pick up the ball in the end an attempt at a bouncer there from Stephen Wall. Perhaps a little frustration creeping in to this Australian attack and what a magnificent shot from Greenwich. Oh, he smashed that one. High and wide over Boone's head and into the fence it goes. With the Windies openers looking like they'd be camped at the crease till Christmas, it was the previously unlucky McDermott who finally broke through. short leg. No, it's not. It's Haynes. Haynes out, caught it forward, short leg, a big inside edge, and it went bobbing up in the air, and there was no way that that could ever be dropped. That's the first blood there to McDermott, just on the knee roll, the balloon in the air. David Boone takes the easiest of catch, and the West Indies opening stand is split. 
score 68. Desmond Haynes out for 17. And it was fitting that in the very next over, the deadly bowling of Alderman was rewarded with the wicket of Gordon Greenwich. The Australians had had the most pleasant of Christmas Eve lunches, two quick wickets and the prospect of more in the afternoon, despite earlier indications that it was a perfect batting pitch. It promised to be an appealing afternoon's cricket and that's just what it turned out to be. Well, that's very close. Merv Hughes was certain it was closer than that. And Parkrafter doesn't agree. It's two for 79. But while some of the Australian appeals were close, there was no doubt about Richardson's superb stroke play. Well, that's four. He didn't get it through rolling his wrist and going along the ground. So he de deliberately decided that he would go over the top this time and hooked it well over the head of Jones. Yes, this one uh, not far wide of the fieldsman down at Fine Lake. But wide enough for him uh, not to be able to get across and stop it. It was hit in the air, but well placed by Richardson. Oh, what happened there? Was that a bump ball? Oh, it's just it was. Four runs. Australian captain Border decided to rest his pace men in the 35 degree heat and opted for the spin attack of veteran Peter Taylor. Will we hit? There's no need to run. Carl Hooper showing what Ian Chappell had already pointed out, that you can't have the man too square. Ball coming in towards the weak stump. Hooper plays a perfect cover drive. With Alderman back in the attack, Taylor showed more success catching than bowling. Piece of work by Terry Alderman. Well, on this occasion, it's the patience of the bowler that pays off. Alderman has maintained good line and length and just got the outswinger to go a fraction. Well taken at second slip by Peter Taylor. And the third West Indies wicket is down. Richie Richardson on his way back to the pavilion. West Indies, three for 114. Later attempts to use spin clearly weren't working. He's kicking the ball up to the bat, Peter Taylor, but just over pitching a fraction. Better than being short. Viv Richards seemed to have even worked out Alderman's impressive pace bowling. Play yourself in. I think it was that sort of shot um, in which he broke the jaw of Badcock, the medium pace bowler for Tasmania, whilst he was playing for Queensland. There's the bowler killer. Just a little bit of bottom hand took that to wide of the stumps. A change was needed, and all rounder Steve Waugh was pitted against Richards. It was a tactic destined to bring results. I think Viv was going to let that one go, and uh, only ever so lucky. Tried to pull back, and that bounced ever so close to the off sun. This is the way Vivian started off in Perth. He wasn't getting it in the middle of the bat at all over there. They're flying off the edge. Played and missed it a few. All of a sudden, he decided to go to blaze and finish up with uh, well over the 100 mark. But in this time, Stephen Waugh didn't bowl one bouncer. 
at Vivian Richards. He kept that ball up round about off stump. And the master blaster is gone. A good, safe pair of hands there. Clutched it. And it's backer and... Uh... Hope the crowd here at the MCG enjoy that and a very vital breakthrough for Australia who now taken four West Indian wickets and the Master Blaster is out for just 12. Then Logie must have thought all his Christmases had come at once when Taylor dropped this catch. Well, things have been going so well for the Australians. Peter Taylor's taken one catch already. Unfortunately, he's built that one. By slip catching standards, this seemed to be a bit of a dolly. Not that they are ever really a dolly, but that was just to his right. It wasn't really that quick. And he really should have caught that one. But finally, it was the great man himself, Alan Border, who caught Hooper off McDermott to record his 111th test catch. catch by border he came forward which is not easy to do in that slip cordon and this is a very very good catch forward he comes and what a wicket for Australia Paul Hooper out for 38 five for 147 With the West Indies resuming at 5 for 160 after tea, it was Terry Alderman who resumed his loud series of appeals. It's forward, they asked the question. That's Logie well forward. Well, Peter McConnell had a look, but they have struck him just outside the line. Second slip. Swift throw their heads back. Didn't carry. It was beautifully bowled. Peter Taylor, the fieldsman. Ah! It's got to be close. He's got it. Yes, well, the crowd roars. Alderman picks up his third wicket. Logie, LBW, to Terry Alderman. That's Logie, just 10 runs against his name. Alderman bowling out swinger, out swinger, out swinger. And then the nip backer. He undercuts the seam. Look at that. Deviates a lot. Hit in line with off stump. No doubt about it. Peter McConnell fires to the heavens. And Logie, a very small West Indian batsman, on his way. So six down now for 166. With Logie gone, Alderman set about trying to destroy Malcolm Marshall with mixed results. There have been plenty of shouts for LBW today, particularly with uh, Terry Alderman bowling. That's because he's had a nice off-cutter going, as well as the outswinger. He's got it away, down towards the boundary. Runs have been at a premium, but this will go for four. Just holding up now, but just making it into the boundary. At the other end, War was having similar trouble with Geoffrey Dujon. The shots like that. That is a perfect off drive. A classical shot from Dujon. This is a lovely player to watch when he's in form, and that's one of the reasons why, because he's a full or free flowing player with a full swing of the bat. Just wide, and in fact, the third slip had just been moved. There was a third slip in there, the ball before. And Alan Border has every right to remain on the ground almost in tears. He had moved that third slip, only the ball before. The last thing War needed was a display of pre-Christmas juggling as he set about Marshall. But juggling was just what he got. The 
collision. And Marshall goes. Caught, dropped, and eventually caught. And Marshall is out. Caught Jones, Bo Stephen Wall. Dean Jones is uh, hobbling a little bit after this effort. Now, I don't know why that is. Because it certainly uh, didn't get anywhere near his knee. Mind you, it hit most other parts of his body. Finally, the seventh wicket is down for 185. There was nothing the field could do about this hook shot by Kirtley Ambrose off war. Well, he doesn't mind hooking either. That really was a gift. It was down the leg side. So in whatever respect they're up there, he's going to have a go. But it was War who was rewarded by finally capturing Dujon, taking the score to eight for 199. And he's gone this time. Nibbling outside the off stump. Regulation catch to Healy. And the West Indies have lost their eighth wicket. Once again, that ball moving just a fraction off the seam. It was the leg cutter from Steve Waugh. And he gets his third wicket, second catch to Ian Healy. And the eighth West Indies wicket is down for 199. With Hughes back in the attack, the Windies rallied. And there's a great shot. Beautiful timing there. Must be 70, 80, almost 90 metres from the bat. See Steve Waugh going for the flat throw. They've gambled on another one. <laughs> and that's not a bad hit. Quite got enough on it to bring up the boundary. They've got three. That's all they'll get. Steve War has bowled a superb line and length. A little bit of deviation. Not a great deal of science about that shot. A fair bit of energy. Will it bring rain? Not today. I'm talking about with Ambrose that he is a very frustrating player. Second score long now to 8 for 280, and that's a nice thick outside edge. He doesn't mind very much where they come from. The tail end was wagging, and McDermott showed little Christmas spirit with this delivery. But with the two big men bruised but unbowed, the West Indies finished the day at 8 for 241. After the break, Richie Benno with his summary of the day's play. Well, welcome back. That was an excellent day's cricket. The Australians did very well after West Indies got away to an excellent start from uh, Greenwich and Haynes this morning. Their final card showed that it finished up just about even, I reckon. Eight for 246. West Indies got more than they looked like making at one stage. The Australians would have settled for eight wickets at any point where Greenwich and Haynes were doing so well in the morning. The card has quite an uneven look about it until you get down there to Kirtley Ambrose and Courtney Walsh. That is a very frustrating partnership so far as the Australians are concerned. They've added 47 so far, and that fellow Ambrose is a very good young cricketer and uh, a very difficult chap to dislodge. Before you know where you are, he's made 20, 25 runs, an excellent effort from him. Eight for 246. The Australians toiled hard out there. I thought the pick of the bowlers was Alderman. Three for 51 from 27 overs and eight maidens. And War, 21 overs, three maidens, three for 77. Also bowled well. In fact, they all bowled well. Hughes didn't get any results for an excellent uh, morning. His first spell finished up with none for 52. And Peter Taylor used for only seven overs. The Australian over rate was very slow today. Uh, still overs hanging around there at the conclusion of the first day. 
So, no cricket tomorrow, but uh, cricket on Boxing Day here. We have a rest day on Christmas Day. But normally, there's no rest day in a test match in Australia, but uh, this game goes from 24 to 29 of December. Picks up again on Boxing Day. So, with uh, a good day's cricket here and another one to look forward to on Boxing Day, it's time to wish you all a very Merry Christmas from all the nine commentary team and all the production team as well. Take care, drive carefully, and have a super day. We look forward to having you with us on Boxing Day. This has been another presentation from... ...the MCG Test Match between Australia and the West Indies. Welcome to the highlights. West Indies began at 8 for 246. Their card shows that uh, Ambrose is on 37 and Walsh on 16. A very good partnership between that pair for the ninth wicket. 83 overs bowled for those uh, 246 runs and the loss of eight wickets. Well, today the start of play was delayed for 45 minutes. The umpires and the ground staff reckoned it would take that long to uh, get all the covers cleared off, all the paraphernalia needed before a start could be made. They set it for 11.45. We join play now with the first ball of the day. Walsh is the batsman, Alderman the bowler, and your commentators, Tony Cozier and Max Walker. And Ambrose is a long way down. Well, action to start off with. There's no chance for the Christmas pudding to settle there. Hey, Gertley Ambrose. It's a little slow to spin around. Christmas might have intervened, but Terry Alderman continued with his noisy form of Saturday, although he wasn't having the same luck against Kirtley Ambrose. Yeah. Nice placement. And Ambrose showing that he's quite capable. So picks up two. And despite the early morning drizzle, and cool conditions, the crowd building up nicely at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Nicely placed. Fieldsman taking some time to turns. Stephen Moore. On Saturday it was bright and sunny and good for batting. Today it's dull and overcast and it won't be a good seeing day. Beautifully played. McDermott was the man who finally dispatched Ambrose, but only after the tail ender had racked up a career best of 44. He's gone the left hander. It must have been pitched just inside leg stump and kept straight enough to hit the stumps. Not always easy for a right hand bowler to get an OBW decision against a left hander. Well, I think Courtney, Courtney Ambrose is a little bit unlucky. Balls from a fair angle, Craig McDermott. That's the result. He's out LBW for 44. It's nine for 256. Patterson was off to a shaky start with the Australians coming close on several occasions. Ah! Well, there you go. How little difference between the LBW given out, and that one given not out. Nine for 2.56. And it's over, nine for 2.57. But Patterson and Walsh held on, racking up valuable runs as McDermott and Alderman struggled to clean up the Windies' innings. And a slower ball that's very well picked by the batsman. That's good cricket. It's intelligent batting, and the crowd do love to see a tail ender hitting out. Valuable runs. Terry Alderman. Good shot. That's the shot of the morning so far. It has to be struck well to make the boundary. The outfield very slow. Glorious off drive. Oh. 
these runs really hurt not only for the bowler but for the whole team they played so well on Saturday finally it was Alderman who nabbed that final vital wicket trapping Patterson for 13 and netting the West Indies a first inning score of 280 That's a very good effort from uh, the West Indies. Those tailenders did a tremendous job for Vivian Richards. The final card for their innings, 280, 93.1 overs bowled. Courtney Walsh, he's a tailender, but he did a terrific job for Viv Richards there. Finished up 30, not out. Ambrose, 44, his highest score in Test Match Cricket. And Patterson, 13. And those last three men added 81 runs to get them up to 280 all out. The bowling figures for Australia, they stuck to their task well. It's not easy when they're flying off the edge sometimes and then off the middle of the bat. Alderman and McDermott, the bowlers used today. Alderman, 32.1 overs, nine maidens, four for 68. McDermott, 19 overs, three maidens, and three for 62. We join the Australian innings now. They had uh, something like 20 minutes to bat before lunch. In the fourth over, five runs are on the board. Ambrose is coming in to bowl to Boone and your commentators, Tony Gregg and Max Walker. Well, they go this time, and a slight fumble there from Haynes as he came in. I think he'd probably have made it anyhow. But Haynes was in like a flash. Not an easy one to pick up and throw here. He decided on the underarm. That's the quickest way to get rid of the ball. He doesn't pick it up cleanly. Had he picked that up cleanly, would have had a wicket down. If the Australians looked shaky before lunch, after the break, they settled down to some serious test cricket, with openers Boone and Marsh warming to the Windies' attack. Past the wicketkeeper. Maybe red buys. Red buys. No wicket for 19. Good shot. Catch it was a cry. It was over the top. In Perth, David Boone taking up the attack for the short pitch delivery. That's a good shot. Over the top, he waited for the bounce, over the face. And Boone taking up the attack, not to be intimidated by the short pitch delivery. with his field facing he's been your man for marsh into a short cover or silly mid off he's quite deep really he's for the one that's pushed forward almost the almost deep enough to catch a drive there it's four or five meters from the, the bat oops catch it was a cry Logie Getting it on the half volley. He's a very agile little man, Gus Logie. And uh, there's always the chance that he'll catch anything that goes near him. Did pretty well to get as close as he did on that occasion. The ball bouncing just in front of his hand. Not by much. Close. Not supported by the sift cord and the wicketkeeper and bowler asking the question. It's gone through Courtney Walsh. In fact, right through him was a no ball and cracked pretty hard by Boone. Ambrose to Boone, and for once, those stocky legs were to let the talented Tasmanian opener down. He slips and falls, and that's a really piece of hard luck for Australia. He pushed into the offside. It wasn't a run in any case. And the run out caused when he slipped. Yes, he got on his heels here a little bit. Called for one. As he got on his heels there to stop, down he goes. And really, it's all over at that stage, except the throw was just a little wide and I tell you little Gus Logie didn't do badly there he had to reach past the stumps didn't dislodge the bales and uh, at last Desmond Haynes has managed to affect one of those from a short single a good innings by David Boone 
Um, the frustrations there of uh, being tied down by Ambrose beginning to tell one football. The locals look to be showing none of the jitters that usually beset them facing the feared West Indian attack. But as the light faded, so did the Australian run rate. Bad light finally halted play for several minutes. Back on the pitch, and the break had boosted the confidence of Jones and Marsh, despite the odd scare. Going to avoid the fly slip. Into the boundary. We did discuss that fly slip earlier, that he, he was a fraction close. And Marsh has gone over the top. Seemed to get a very thick top edge to that. And the flies have had to turn. The ball lobbed five or six metres over his head and raced away for four. Shout of catch it. It's just like he couldn't quite do. And I reckon he's probably taking a bit of skin off his hand. Landing on that old wicket as he did. Seemed to get Marsh on the arm. It was a cry catch it. Seemed higher than that. Marsh... A little bit of trouble. Great effort by Logie. Didn't hang on to it, but one feels that it struck Marsh on the forearm. Only a bounce there. That's a nice reply from Geoffrey Marsh. Australia 1 for 61. Got a shout there from Patterson, but I would say it was just outside the line of off stump and may have also been a fraction high. Quick delivery from Patrick Patterson. It's cut back, it's a fraction high. Ah! Right again, I think, might have favoured the batsman. Patterson generating some pace and some movement back off the seam. Cutting back, that certainly was close, just going over the top. In the air, but wide of Patterson, and into the boundary. Well, that's great to see the first hook shot that's connected properly. Jones, a fine stroke player, going for that one and getting enough bat on it to keep it away from the fine leg. He was off the front foot initially. Placed it well. He's hit that one beautifully. Definitely his confidence is starting to build a little, Jeff Marsh. That was a top shot because he hit that right off the meat of the bat. It wasn't over swift, it was over backward point. Deliberate square cut without trying to keep the ball down. Whack for the moment hit the middle of the bat. Yeah. It's a nice shot from Dean Jones. Look good overs there for Australia. So with the Australians in control, the teams left the field for the tea break with a score at 1 for 84. Okay. Had a couple of appeals in the last over. Jeff Marsh again, the batsman. Ah! And once again, that one quite close to the gloves and the bat and perhaps the thigh pad. Last over, there was a big appeal for one down the leg side. See if you can see this jumper move just after the ball flicks the uh, hip of the batsman. Field changes for Dean Jones. The third slip back in position. Big appeal. Well, Malcolm Marshall has been frustrated time and again today. He's been close, but the umpire has considered he's not been close enough. You've got to stay in your seat, Kaz, when these big appeals occur. You've got to settle down a bit. That one nipping back quite a long way, just missing leg stump. What a good 
Yorker. He really let that go. The batsman, I sensed, might have lost it, but he was certainly late with the stroke. And Patrick Patterson has broken through. Marsh is gone. Yes, there was something strange about it from Geoffrey Marsh's point of view. He was either looking for the short one or just didn't see it at all. But uh, he didn't even come close to hitting it. And the ball hit the base of off stump on the full. So after a battling knock, Geoffrey Marsh is out for 36. Australia, 2 for 103. Although Jones had moments of brilliance, he too would ultimately fall to the West Indies speed attack. Good straight from Jones. see too many half volleys in this series and take advantage of them Dean Jones certainly took full advantage of that one he's in perfect position and a beautiful follow through the bat following through in exactly the direction he wanted the ball to go and that's where it finished got in beautifully bowled what a Yorker what a performance by this young man. Jones has been there over two hours. He gets a York and it takes the off stump. Superb bowling. Man has bowled at blistering pace, had a bit of a break, and he's come back with one of his most attacking balls. Gets through past the outside edge. The big Yorker knocks back the off stump and disappointment for Australia just when they were starting to find their way australia three for 117 dean jones out for 28. border came to the crease in his 100th test to the cheers of the big crowd he received quite a different greeting from kirkley ambrose the story goes that in don bradman's final test match he had a tear in his eye and was bowled by hollies for a duck well alan border certainly must have a lump in his throat it was a magnificent ovation from a crowd that loves their sportsmen and women proud moment for Alan Border and his family five balls later it was Ambrose doing the cheering as he dismissed the Australian captain with a superb Yorker Yorker again and Alan Border in his 100th test match is York for a duck Courtney Ambrose has just got rid of Dean Jones with that delivery and does it now with Australia's premier batsman. And it's not only Darrells that will be weeping as he goes back to the dressing room. With the Australian hopes dwindling, the windy sustained pace attack kept the Australians scoring down. Steve Waugh will have seen uh, how fast Ambrose bowled in his first spell and how he started the second spell. Even so, he may not have been quite completely prepared for that first delivery, which was very, very swift. Oh, that didn't hit something. The edge first and then the stumps, they must have dodged. That was a great delivery. It's pitched six inches outside off stump and had to be taken for oh, two and a half, three feet outside lee. And went over the top as well. Good Yorker and well played and a little nod of approbation. Claimed very steeply. They just have got him on the 
on the glove first and then into the jaw. Finally, it was bad light that finished the day five minutes before the official close of play. As the Australians left the field, they must have been wondering just what had happened to a day of cricket that had started so well. Welcome back, and what a struggle that was for the Australian batsmen in uh, the last session of play here on the second day at the MCG. Their card at the close of play, four for 121. Boone run out for 23, Marsh bowled Patterson 36, Jones bowled Ambrose 28, and Border bowled Ambrose no score. Wood, four not out, and War, four not out. 26 extras, four for 121 from 53.3 overs, and the bowling figures for the West Indies. An outstanding performance from Kirtley Ambrose, who gets better all the time. 14.3 overs, five maidens, two for 22. And just to show you what an odd game this is, Courtney Walsh bowled very well indeed and failed to take a wicket. 11 overs, two maidens, none for 26. A wicket to Patrick Patterson. They all did well. Marshall was a little bit below par today, but uh, it was a good effort from those four men. And they fought back well after they had established that 280-run uh, first innings. So the Australians... 159 behind at the moment, coming into the third day's play tomorrow, and uh, we look forward to having you with us then. It's uh, quite an exciting time in this test match. The Australians looked as though they had the advantage. It was wrested from them by some brilliant bowling from the West Indians, and tomorrow should be an absolute beauty. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports. With core waiting, you need not encounter a busy line again. Simply press the buttons marked R and 2 when you hear the call waiting signal. The first call will be held whilst you answer the second call. To return to the first caller, press the same two buttons. With call waiting, you will never miss that special call again. Call waiting, it's like having a second line for a fraction of the cost.